Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Nick and Sergio's Fun Watch List. I am, of course, Nick. I am Sergio. How are you today, Sergio? With pain. Oh, yeah, Sergio I just... I can't smile very much, but I'm smiling right now, and it hurts. <laughs> Sergio got their wisdom teeth out, and we've been nursing them back to health. Mostly better? Mostly you got some better. stitches in there still, right? Yeah, I have some stitches, but, you know, I'm feeling good. Thank goodness, uh, during your healing process, we had this very... Very chaotic episode of La Mas Draga to watch. What I, a I didn't crazy think crazy episode. I didn't think Honestly, it could get crazier. <laughs> I thought last week's episode was crazy. This was another turn. It's another level of craziness. Are they just making up a new rule every no, like five minutes? I, I, I think <laughs> after this episode, the rules make sense. In my head, I'm like, okay, I see the rules. You see it now. I see it. I'm more confused than ever. I see it. It's like there's like. 15 rules. So there's 15 rules. They go through about five of them at the start of this episode. They gather in front of the starboard. You know what? You know what? I'm sorry. This is, of course, episode five. It is the Macacariero episode. And in the spirit of Macacariero, oh I would like to immediately God. remove my jacket. And you just were... be comfortable here okay. in my black tank Don't top. complain. Don't complain when people don't compliment your tank tops because that's all you hey, wear. Hey, look. I, I tried hard. I had a good shirt and no one said anything about it. I'm wearing tank tops the rest of the season. Oh, <laughs> Only God. tank tops. I'm not going to try anymore. But yeah, they are arguing about the rules in front of the starboard. And this is the point that I'm getting at. They don't even know who's dead and who's alive. Because they're like, Velveteen's they back. Yes. And okay, I didn't know that. I'm just learning that now. She's alive I think that now. was a point of learning now. Well, that's very unceremonious. You would think yes. they would be like, hey, you got a star, so now you're alive again. That That's the only one where I expected a gold star to be the thing that yeah. brought you back. And I'm like, what happened tonight? That's why I'm like, they're making up the rules as they go along. Because yes. I think everyone just really likes Velveteen. Especially based on some of the things that happen in this episode. Okay, now when you say it that way, I agree with you. <laughs> they wanted to bring Velveteen back somehow. And they're like, oh, well, she got a pink star, so let's bring her back. Even though it was like a gold star that was supposed to bring you back. But also, I thought that she was going to lip sync when she was brought back. I thought you were brought back and then you were like asked to perform. To like win your way back to in? To win your way back oh, in. Oh, interesting. I thought I thought this was the rule. No, never mind. That I said fun. I knew the rules. I don't know the rules. You don't. No one does. It's impossible to know. And while they are gathered in front of the starboard, talking about what happened the previous week, Soro is getting in her feelings about some of the voting that has happened. She is really upset. And she calls Sirena a hypocrite right to her face. Right to her face. Honestly, I mean, it was shocking that she was in the bottom last episode. It was pretty to me. crazy. I thought Rudy was going to be the one that they were going to vote for, but that did not happen. Well, they were really leaning towards that in the edit, for yes. sure. Avias Ku enters to describe the challenge of the week. She is dressed in the RuPaul outfit that RuPaul stole from Naomi Smalls. Avias has done the prismatic version. And she she, of course, announces that the recurring challenge from season five will be La Mas del Toro. And at the beginning of the episode, I said, what challenge from season five do you think they'll do? And you said La and Mas I del Toro. And I said La Mas del Toro. Yeah. And it happened. It did happen. Are you uh, some sort of psychic person? No. <laughs> It's just an educated know. guess. I, I just was an educated guess. I was yeah. like from la <laughs> season five, which was not like the most fashion forward. I was like, it wasn't. Do you think so? No, I have no opinion. <laughs> I mean, the fashion girl was Greta White, and sh you know. It's just anything. hard for me to say that season five is not a fashion season when we have Maka Carriero as the host of that season. Wearing tank tops Serving the fashion season. every single week, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Are you excited to see this challenge once more? I was very excited. I mean, it's El Toro. It's somebody that knows how to take you to another world. Yeah. So I was like hoping that the girls would do that, and I think they delivered. I, I think, think it was you, a great episode. I think you're like a little more of a Guillermo del Toro fan than me. Uh, what's your favorite Guillermo del Toro? Because I mean, I'm on record. My favorite is Pinocchio, which we saw together. I mean, the best movie that he has is Pan's Labyrinth. Pan's Labyrinth is wonderful, I mean, of that course. Movie That's the easy so answer. so magical. You don't have any others that are fun for you? None stick out? Because I picked Pinocchio, which was kind of an edgy choice. You picked Pan's mm -hmm. Labyrinth, which is you know, a little bit of basic choice. <laughs> Do you have any other <laughs> Guillermo del Toro movies that speak to you? Um, I mean, I remember watching Hellboy because I was like around Hellboy's that fun. perfect age when yeah. it came out and I saw it. Well, they announced that there will also be a Chiquireto and everyone needs to get into quick drag. And halfway through getting into quick drag, the lights go the out. The lights go out. I think they did it too late because everyone looked fine. <laughs> everybody looked fine, yes. And everybody was kind of wearing a similar outfit. So I know that they... 
They were all wearing like a farm like a farm outfit. Yeah. outfit. So it was like something that they knew was coming. Yeah, and I I think they were probably told that this was for a mini challenge because these are not runway looks. These yeah, are these just, are not runway. Yeah, these are silly little farm looks. Yes. So we go to this little set that they made. It's like a, a little cheap backdrop and some hay bales, and it's a farm set. And we see some goats, some pigs. What was your favorite of the little animals? I mean, the goats were cute. I love goats. The funny thing is that this was a twist that I was not expecting. This was pretty... I was confused. I didn't know how we got to the cockroaches. <laughs> but then I realized, oh, they thought, like, little chickens or something yes, cute is going to go in there. Something cute is going to go in there. Yes. Um... Look, am I especially excited by any kind of gross-out challenge in a drag competition? Not really. Mm. And I didn't think this was a particularly interesting one. I mean, I just want to call out, like, the difference in treatment for each of the yes. girls and how many cockroaches were put in their little I'm like, containers. Look, this isn't. Uh, this theory does not hold water because it was the Toxico who was putting the cockroaches on. But I'm a little bit, like... Is the number of cockroaches and where they're placed on the head based on, like, how they treat the staff? Because for some of them, he, like... <laughs> wow. I, I don't know! Wow. <laughs> Maybe Serena's really mean to the people backstage. I don't know. Because she got covered she in got cockroaches. She got covered on her head. <laughs> like, also, Madison was also another one that got it in her face area. And they obviously love Velvet, because they only put they one They love Velveteen because they made her win the challenge, and they also put one cockroach in They only put container. one in there. And they also, like, put it far away from her face. I know. That's what I'm saying. I'm calling out the way that they're treating each of them. Because Wajardo's also got only one. Yeah. They were pretty nice to her. I don't know. It's, it's fine. I don't really care this about this This is an challenge. arbitrary challenge. I think they just wanted to get some winners. and They wanted to do some Mario Party. The winners. Because, yeah, the seemingly randomly selected winners yeah. are Sirena. Madison and Velveteen. Velveteen. Um, so clearly they were like giving Velveteen maybe a chance they, to they maybe get the, another star Maybe they there. got the questions right and that was it. There also were... the difference in questions. Some of them were about Guillermo del Toro and some of them were about like the most random things. So it's yeah. also like, what? One of them was literally asked, what are the names of the other people in this competition? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she couldn't remember. <laughs> and she couldn't remember. And that was an easy one. That was pretty funny. I think that was Cifra. They go and they pick their eggs. Sirena opens hers first. Only 500 pesos. We go over to Madison. She gets the gold star. Bam. Right there. I was pretty happy. I was happy. I, I was love happy Madison. Madison yeah. yeah. And if there's going to be this randomness, I like that it's going to someone who is doing well in the competition. Yes. So it doesn't feel too arbitrary. Yes. Um, Velve, she gets the second best. She gets 5,000 pesos. So you can do something with that. And then this ends. I just have to say, this is the thing. Look, I'm fine with the gross out of the cockroach. You do your thing. When you throw all those cockroaches and then the girls are running around, that was mean to the that cockroaches. That was mean to the cockroaches. Those cockroaches worked hard. They went in so many wigs. They gave us good TV. And then you just threw them across the room. This is not Asia O'Hara. We're not going to be stepping on bugs in our drag competition. Oh, well, yeah. Also talking about the cockroach that fell off of Madison's oh, that, was, was that was actually, that made the whole thing worth it. Because when Madison got her gold star, she danced around and a cockroach fell out of her somewhere. It fell out of her body or her wig or her dress. Oh, <laughs> That's God. horrifying. That's horrifying. <laughs> we go into the workroom. There's one central conflict in the workroom that I want to talk about. And it's the one that was hinted at at the beginning of the episode. This beef with Soro and Sirena is mm. really heating up because there's these alliances. Soro says that Sirena said that she was not going to vote for her. And because of that alliance, didn't vote for Sirena when she wanted to. But the first opportunity that Sirena had to vote for Soro, she did. I feel like it's elevated in terms of like, <laughs> this is the first time you're able to vote for me. It's like, no, I could have voted for you the last four weeks. Like, what's the difference this time around or like three weeks at that point i guess is it just because she was in the top she was doing relatively well i mean she was in the top again but you can still get voted for even if yeah, you have even a if you star. have a pink star you can get voted for so yeah i didn't really understand the logic there i did not understand the logic either i feel like alliances are juicy and <laughs> <laughs> maybe you remember a little better than me what do you think the existing alliances are based on what wajardo has been saying the alliances are madison barre Rudy Reyes and Sirena. That's like one alliance. Okay. The second alliance is Georgiana, Sirena, and Guajardo. 
So wow. That, those are another three. And then the ones that are off is Velotin and Seifert. They're the ones on the round. And it's funny that the two who were not a part of an alliance were the ones that lip sync tonight. Oh, that's true. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they both kind of, spoiler alert, ended up there for different reasons. Yes, for way different <laughs> reasons. It was and it's shocking. funny that we have someone who's like leading the competition with no alliance mm-hmm. and someone who's sort of lagging behind a little bit also with no alliances. So it's mm-hmm. interesting that those are the two who are just on their own. Do you think this could actually have an effect on who wins the season? These alliances. If there's only a specific number of girls that go to the end, yes. I think that these alliances will come into play. But also, they're giving out random stars each (laughs) episode. (laughs) That also the show is doing that. So I feel like... We may not see the people that we think should be in the top, in the actual top at the end. Maka Karieto comes out, my fucking queen of all queens. This is my favorite of all of the La Mastraga hosts. I love her very informative style of delivery. She's a news anchor, of course. I'm very jealous because when we were in Mexico City, you went out on some errands without me and you saw her in a coffee shop. I didn't I get to see her. I saw her in a coffee shop. What was she like? She was just like herself. Did you give her a, a hug? tank top. She was what color? What color tank top? I I don't know. If, I, I don't. I don't remember. Probably black wearing. or white. Those are her favorite black. color I tank think tops. Black. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, for real. We love Maka. She looks very cute. I love this denim jacket that she's wearing. It's oversized. She does take it off almost immediately, but that's fine. Um, she introduces Lola Cortez, who has a cool kind of Catwoman hair braid mask. Do you like her outfit today? Yeah, her outfit. Her outfit was very interesting. I feel like the. Hair was cute. The outfit was cute. Very dominatrix, like you said. I think I think she looks great. She looks great. Very intimidating. Very <laughs> she's intimidating. She's already intimidating. Yes. And she's wearing a very intimidating look this week. Yeah. Last week's was like the chill one. The, yeah. the, this one is the... <laughs> I'm here for business. And on the other end of the spectrum, we have the returning makeup artist, Alfonso Weitzman. And he's just giving like a full Lisa Frank color palette. Yes. Lots very of cute. pink. I love this look. I want to wear this. I want to look this good and uh, skin tight. With little the onesie. Boots. The boots were cute. Oh, I want those boots. Give me those boots, mama. Yeah, I loved it. Yes. Very cute. Welcome back, Alfonso. We missed you. Even though we liked Luis. And we've we've just got to get into this. What? <laughs> you say even though we like Luis more? Is that what I didn't said? say we like Luis more. I just said I'm not putting Luis down. I'm just saying, welcome back, Alfonso. Okay. Are you trying to start a beef with me and Alfonso that I don't, that I like Luis more or something? Yes. Well, that'd be fun. I haven't had a beef in a long time. Alfonso, if you want to beef with me, I guess I'll come back on Twitter just to beef with you. <laughs> Let's go into this runway. La Mas del Toro. We have Guajardo out first, and she's doing a pretty cool Pacific Rim inspired monster. I thought this had lots of nice little details to it. The mask is very, like, Tim Burton to me. I was very impressed with this outfit, actually. I really loved the way that she was moving on stage with the little stilts in the front. And then when she removed the mask, like, it actually worked really oh, nice. Oh, yeah, because she did kind of a, a this. Yes. And the mask just came and off. the mask just came <laughs> off, and that was really cool. I do not agree with... I think Lolita is just, like, that's her punching bag for some reason to me. Yeah, does Lolita hate Wajardo? I think so. Because <laughs> she's like, I was expecting you to do more and blah, blah, blah. And I was like... There's she kind of did a lot. She did a lot. There's some girls that did nothing. Like, you know, Velvetine. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, we'll get to that in a moment. But special shout out to the prosthetics on the head. The way that they are worked into her forehead and then seamlessly worked into the headpiece. I yes. thought was very smart. I mean, I... Yes, I love this. Well, Harto's killing it on the runway. I'm actually like, really happy yeah, for her. Her last episode was really good. This one is also really good. I think, and like out of every queen, when we see at the end move up and down, she's the one that's been in the same spot. Yeah, <laughs> she's I'm been like, kind of consistent. For you. Consistency. <laughs> yes. Maybe that'll get you to the end, though. Maybe that'll get you to the end. Velvetine is next to the stage, and I believe this is Crimson Peak because she's red. I think that's why. I haven't seen Crimson Peak. Have you seen Crimson Peak? Mm-mm. Is this the same one as Seaford or like, is it different? No, Seaford does Book of Life. Okay. So that is different. I just don't, I don't know. I don't like this. Like the proportions are not really there. I like the bigness of the dress. I think that's a fun aspect yeah, of the silhouette. It's cute. It's very Dior. I can say that. But like, the thing on the head, it's, like, not really working for me. Well, also, the veil like, fell off a couple times, too, yeah. 
Like, this just looks like an outfit that I feel like they would just wear at, a, at the bar or something. Yeah. I also feel like with Crimson Peak, the little I know about it, it takes place in, like, a big castle or something. And I just feel like this flannel is just, like, taking me to a very non-castle place. And also, like, talking about performance, like, she didn't really perform. She just walked. Yeah. <laughs> And and so, struggled with the veil. And struggled with the veil just by walking. So I don't know. To me, this was very weak. I, the weakest of the night. The weakest of the night. Uh, the weakest on a strong night, though. I think this yes, is the weakest a cool on a strong look. night. Yeah. Yeah. If if someone just walked into the bar wearing this, you'd be like, "Wow, you look amazing." It's just hard when she's on with some all stars and she's she's not an all star. Like this would be cute for a regular season. I think for an all stars based on what everybody else is wearing, this is the weakest. Yeah, unfortunately. But we do love you, Velve. If I was on the set, I would only put one cockroach on you as well. You seem very lovely. Rudy Reyes is next to the stage, and this was a wow for me. I this didn't, was amazing. I didn't know Rudy was going to do something like this this season. This was a shocking one where I was like, the entire time I was just like, couldn't take my eyes off of her. She's gorgeous. There's still a little bit of the Rudy Reyes sex appeal with the 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 sheer middle. The sheer middle. So we get to see her hot body, but she's also giving like this womanly blue fairy essence. The mask reveal was good. Venenito playing Pinocchio. Those Inspired casting. Love yes. it. <laughs> and just literally just the color of blue she chose. It's stunning. This color of blue is fantastic. When she removes the mask and then the horns. Let me ask about the horns. When she takes them off, it looks like they're kind of glowing on the inside. Did you notice that? I did not notice that. I guess they are. They're kind of glowing, right? Yeah. What is that? I don't I- know. I wonder if it's, this is like a pretty common problem with drag shows is if someone incorporates like a light or a light up aspect into There's their too garment. Much light. Exactly. You can't see it. So maybe there was a cool reveal. I think these horns are flashlights and it just didn't read on the stage. Mm. But even without that but even working. Even without that, like it was amazing. Loved she it. walked the wrong way and it was good. And very pretty face. Yes. And more wings. We love wings. It's the season of wings. Madison is next to the stage. She. Oh my god! <laughs> this I was screaming the entire time. I just lost. I it, yeah. literally was, literally yelling out loud. I could not <laughs> believe what was happening. Let's lay it all out. She walks out. She's all covered up. She's got this like pans mask on a on a stick. It's kind of a pastiche of all of his movies because there's like a little mm-hmm. there's a little sci-fi in there. There's a little um, gothic horror with a like evil looking book with Guillermo del Toro's face on it. There's a little bit of all of the Guillermo references in here. And then she removes the hood. And what does she look like underneath? Literally Guillermo del Toro. The simplest Shocking. thing you could do is be Guillermo del Toro. And she did that. <laughs> and she looks fantastic. Like, I... <laughs> Even looking at it again, I'm just This was, amazed. for me, the Kian S.A.A. S.A.A. moment. Yes. I had to ask you, who is that? I did not know. This was so Well, she's impressive. wearing prosthet- like big, heavy prosthetics. Yeah. So it's like, yes. I think, I think sometimes in the runways, people are looking at, like, how can you turn something into your drag? But I feel like for this runway, a lot of them just went, like, I'm just going to push it and yeah. do more, which I like. And it's very fun. It's thinking outside the box. It's like that challenge they did in Drag Race where everyone had to dress up as Rue. Mm. Milk thought outside the box. She comes out as Boy Rue. And then puts, gets put in the bottom. For and gets put in the bottom. <laughs> Seafair is next to the stage. And I was very impressed by this. I mean, her, wow, her standards are very high. Wow, the level of detail of this outfit. It is no match to any of the runways tonight. Mm-hmm. Like, the level of beating and, like, small little details. Like, when you look at it so many times, you you can still find new things on it. It was fantastic. Everywhere. I mean, with this umbrella uh, being its own set piece as they come out, um, dropping the petals, and then into this reveal that it is a literal toro. Um, She's kind of giving a bull. She's being stabbed by the matador swords. It was a very beautiful, cohesive package for me. I think this was very, it was like high, like in the high safe sound for me. Yeah, yeah. I guess, what are the weaknesses of it? A little slow on the Like a little slow when she was walking. I'll give it, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Sure, sure, sure. But I love the train. The train like kind of jets out sideways. It gives a really great dimension. I thought it was worth the kind of like clumsy turnaround to have that train. But that's just me. 
But this is something that Wajardo kind of struggled with also in the first episode. Yeah, yeah. She had that crazy, like, caterpillar train, Mm -hmm. and it got turned over on itself. This wasn't quite that situation, but she definitely had to take her time when she was doing those turns. Soda Nasty is next to the stage, and I really like this one. I I actually have no idea what this is from. She's some sort of tree monster. Two episodes ago, I said I don't like when drag queens secretly have something in their mouth. I think I like it again. <laughs> this season is won me back over. It's won you back over. Because when she They're like doing it right. when she spit the black goo into the Venonos mouths, I was like, "Oh, that's fun. That's a new twist on I've got goo in my mouth." So I appreciated it. I I think she gave she gave performance. Mm-hmm. I think in terms of her outfit, it was not like the best outfit out of everyone, but I feel like obviously this has cemented the judging as like performance. They're yes. judging your performance, and that's what will make you win. She was giving full character, which I appreciated. Obviously, she should be commended. Because she had hiccups, too. She had little hiccups because she lights up this uh, spark ball on a on a string. I don't know what to call it. And then she loses it, like... She knocks her crown off with it. <laughs> which, to me, is scary because that thing's on fire, basically. And she hit it close enough to her head that it knocked the crown off. What if that hit her in the face? Yeah. What if it burned her face? And then her makeup she would have become got two-faced. so smeared. That like was shocking by the end of how it looked. I, I remember like... by the time she, spoiler alert, wins the episode, I looked at her makeup and I was like, whoa, this is crazy. This is a winner. <laughs> but then you go back and you look at it in the workroom and there are so many fine little details. Yeah. I do think she was rightfully commended on her look tonight. Yeah. It just got a little smudged because she was out there performing. It was a shocking turn of events for me. Yeah, but that crown would not stay on her head. This is why you pin things. <laughs> that looks pretty big to pin. I think the veil should have been pinned. The veil I was a little mad at. The crown, I'm like, well, it happens. This was my one problem. If the crown gets knocked off your head, just be like, I'm a fucking just tree monster. It. Yes, don't pick it I up. I don't need my crown. Yeah. I just am. It's the fact that she picks it up. In puts character, it on again. she's like, ooh, I dropped my hat. <laughs> like, and then puts it on again, and then it falls again at the end. It fell like again that. at the end. And it fell when she got the win. It fell once more. And it fell when she won. That's, I would have revoked the, I would have revoked nope, the win. Nope, give it back. <laughs> yeah, it's like, give it back, bitch. Like, no, but even though this wasn't my very favorite outfit, I did like the details in it. There was a lot of construction in the front of the dress with the, the 3D elements. It was cool. Yeah, it was it was fine to me. Georgiana is next to the stage, and this one is spooky. This was very spooky. I have mostly good things to say about this. She comes out, and it's it's giving a little bit of fashion with this the way her face is covered mm-hmm. up. It, it's like a little cheeky, a little editorial. I liked that. And then the Venonos come out, and my only real problem is with how fast the reveal was because mm-hmm. she just kind of jumped on them. And that's, yes. like, when we saw she had a scary Well, she kind of just fell, and then it was, like, a weird jumping on them. And yeah. Then it was, yeah, I agree with you. Definitely. Because once she revealed it, it was like, okay, now we're looking at your scary face, and it's it's pretty scary. But... She looked nothing like her, and I love it. I think this is uh, where I was like, yes, like, you are literally not you right now. Yeah, and I think it's great for Georgiana, who's known for being so cutesy. This is yes. so the opposite direction. This is totally the opposite. I think that's what I, we were talking about, where I think in terms of trajectory, she's ha- having an upward trajectory from the beginning. So yeah. I think I can see her in the, fa- in the finale. I think we're going to see it, because the one thing she needed to do different than her first season is show some versatility. I and think that's exactly that. what she's doing. Yeah. Yeah. We love you, Georgie. We're rooting for you. Next to the stage is Sirena. And she's doing a Shape of Water kind of performance piece. And this one had a few hiccups for me. My main problem is my favorite part was the smoke water tank. Yes, that's and, my favorite part. And it didn't move. It, I, I'm sure for technical reasons, it was just kind of at the back of the stage. So we didn't get to spend any time with it. And then she climbs out of it and she's just kind of in a bodysuit. And barefoot, too. <laughs> barefoot? Oh. Like she's wearing no heels. Well, but look... Fish monsters don't wear heels. We can't put our projections just, of femininity onto fish monsters. I mean, look at <laughs> she's padded. What are you talking about? The padding was really good. I compliment where compliments do. I the feel padding like this was is awesome. the simplest outfit on the runway. It was and too simple for me. I don't. I I I think she also um, is in the bottom for me. Well, this runway. She kind of agrees with you. We'll get to that later. But before we get to that, let's talk about this egg. 
things in the mouth. It's a hot topic. I don't know how you feel about it. I've made my opinions clear. What did you think about this? I've got a thing in my mouth. This one was funny because I was is is not drooling. It's not yeah. something liquid. It was funny. It, it was, was just like a fucking egg. It was a legit surprise for me. Yeah. And it was pretty funny that she like offered it to Lola Cortez as some sort of offering to like yes. get good judgment. I thought that was funny. Yeah, but I feel like overall, because everyone is so strong, this was another more weak one. Yeah, I think it's just hard to be simple this week because everyone is so over the top. I don't think there's any big surprising moments during the judging, except for the fact that Soro Nasty is declared the winner. The winner of the episode. Oh my god. Surprising for me. I Sur- also love Soro Nasty. So I was very that. surprised when she won. I was yeah. like, Who did what? you expect to win? I expected Madison to Madison win. Madison would have been good. I expected maybe Guajardo. Ooh, yeah. yeah. I expected maybe even Georgiana. Mm. But and I think they really like Soronasti. Like, I think they've made it very clear that they love the, what she does. I mean, I love what she does. I'm yeah, happy that no, she... No, I mean, I'm saying... I'm just saying I think it's clear now. Yeah. She does get to return to the competition. She does get critiques now. Like, this is my thing. If you have two stars, that should be when you get no critiques. Like, the two it's black stars. It's when you get one star. I know, but that's crazy. What's the point of getting two stars? It doesn't matter. Because then you're just still up there not getting critiques. There's no difference. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. But this time when she won, I was expecting for her to pick who was going to lip sync for her. Because oh, yes. I was like, in that instance, I was like, okay, it makes sense. She had a black, she's coming with a black star, but she won. That means that she's going to pick somebody to lip sync. Yeah. So twist upon twist because she's in the top, but she lip synced last week. She gets to decide who will lip sync in her place. And I really respect that Soro was transparent about it. And she says, I'm going with strategy. I pick Seafair. Honestly, I thought she was going to go for Sirena because we were coming off of, like, some beef between them. Yes, that would have also been interesting. And also, I thought that she was going to go for critiques. And I feel like overall in critiques, Sirena got the worst. Especially with her outfit was a little bit more simple than everybody else. Oh, Which... and you know what? We we skipped over Purgatorio. We skipped over the voting because Velve was voted. Yeah, but that to one. The yeah. Okay, do you agree with that one? I mean, I I guess I would have voted the same way, I but the editing the was same. telling us that it was going to be Seifer. Everything was leading up. Everything in this episode was yes. Everything was to leading Seifer up to Seifer getting a black star. Yeah, I definitely would have also voted for Velveteen or Sirena. Mm-hmm. I agree. So one of them too, I would have voted for, and I would have been fine with either or yeah to lip sync it's based on the runways like i feel yeah but like i said i respect the strategy in sort of picking seafair she could have gone with the beef but sometimes you can win the game by ignoring your personal beefs yes. and going with what is best and going for, the game. for what is best for the game and fucking she like changed everything yeah everything is different after this move great job soro um because we get this seafair versus velve lip sync but before it starts sirena barges onto the stage in her little fish lady outfit and she's like i've got something to say we were all talking backstage and velve doesn't know the song and i kind of do so let me lip sync instead it was so weird it was, it was very... unnecessary first of all it was a little uncomfortable it was strange. it was also like everything <laughs> saying like i was gonna walk off during the lip sync that i was, was like the that other is crazy so thing. insane in the middle of her coming out and saying i'm gonna lip sync for you she's like yeah, she's doing this because I said I was going to not lip sync. I was going to walk off. How did we get here? <laughs> How did we get there? This is How did like, we get here? This is so unprofessional on so many levels for me <laughs> that I am like, what the hell is like the disrespect for the public, for the judges, for everything where I was like, what are y'all doing? Like this, like you, they're all adults. This is unique to La Mas Draga as far as I know. I cannot think of another drag competition yeah. where someone has volunteered to lip sync in another person's place. It has now happened twice on La Mas Draga because you remember Electra Vandergirl yes. tried to lip sync for her, her girlfriend. Yeah, Teresias. It just d- does not make sense to me. And, and I think I think this is maybe the difference of like, because if you think of Drag Race Mexico, like production is not two people it's like an entire a bunch of people people. so it's like there's a separation between contestants and production as opposed to la masraga where it's like two people who are producing it who are so passionate about it that they get too involved in it and so girls know them as friends so like it it allows more of a personal i don't know i this was weird to me i was like this is a competition and they're doing this this is embarrassing yeah to me 
here's here's my suggestion because like look we we're enjoying the season we're loving the drag talent we're we're enjoying some of the twists why don't we say like next season what if we had just a couple of these rules i say no one dies you just you can accumulate black stars if you get four black stars yeah you're not going to win the competition but like let's lose this whole you don't get critiqued there's only eight girls we can we can do all the critiques so for solo lamas 2 i say Black stars do not kill you. What is your suggestion for Solo Lamas 2? Mm, professionalism. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Succinct. Appreciated. Uh, we go into this lip sync. It's a song that I did And then, not... like, she wins the lip sync. That's it, like, uh, girl, you were, like, doing all this fucking drama just for you to win the lip sync? Like... That, well, that was kind of a fun twist. And I do think that was probably the most interesting way this episode could have ended. The way we got to this lip sync and the fact that it ended with the front runner ending up with a black star, that that's all crazy. But if Velveteen had lost that lip sync, it would have just been a bummer. Like, Seifer can handle one black star. Yes. Like, thank you for taking one for the team, girl. Yeah. We all know you're still great at drag. But if Velve had gotten another black star, I think it would have broken her it brain. It would have broken her <laughs> really bad. Maybe things are different there, but I'm like, she thinks that they're after her. And I'm like, I think you're just the weakest girl. But like then you... you, it's so weird, but because we watched the backstage stuff and she's just sitting there eating popcorn, having a nice time. So like, what? it's just interesting that the intrusive thoughts sometimes get in there and sometimes they don't. Yeah. It, it's, and it's, it's just a competition. I think that's the other thing of like, at the end, when you walk out of that, it's fine. Yeah. It's all fine. They announce that Velve wins the lip sync. But as they announce it, there's this uh, tense moment between Maka and Lolita Cortez. And you told me that there was some sort of like existing beef between them before this episode was filmed. Do you do you have any tea that you can spill about that? Oh, I, I just... Did you talk about this with Maka when you two had coffee together <laughs> in Mexico City? <laughs> no, I got this from the Guajardo Mielecita interview that they did. For La Mastraga, and she was saying that Maca and uh, Lolita Cortez can't stand each other. Wow. And it was apparent in this episode because Maca was like, we just amended our relationship. Do you want to destroy it again or something like that? <laughs> Ooh, I want to know what happened, you know? I, yeah. I, I'm very curious to see what really... Well, didn't... You happened. had you said something, wasn't it? I, like, like, I know, but I, I don't want to I don't wanna say it because I don't know if it's correct. I don't okay. want to be sharing wrong facts. I love sharing wrong facts. That's actually most of what we do on the Concerto's Fun Watch list. So. Yeah, I mean, that is what we do. We do... <laughs> Bias. <laughs> Not on bias, but biased commentary. And that's the end of the episode. Seifer puts her black star on the board. She's not... She, I don't think she's too worried about it. She's not... I, yeah. she's, she's I mean, fine. she's going to make it to the end. She's she, going to be just fine. She's going to win this. She's not going to get critiques next week. Guess what? The critiques were going to be very positive. She's going to get a gold star. <laughs> she's going to get a gold star. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, let's go to viewer comments. We love the comment section. We love hearing nice things from the people watching. Right off the bat, we've got one from Ike Canseco, and they say, love you guys, funny and always on point. Yay. Oh, thank you. We always, he didn't say always funny. He said always on point. Always. So we're on We're bias. sometimes funny. <laughs> sometimes funny, always on point. We, of course, requested what are your La Mastraga conspiracies, and we have a couple. A couple of them are very long, so I can't read them all. So I'm going to read a couple of the short ones. One from Elka Boing. My conspiracy is that Velveteen will not get a gold star due to the girls seeing her as an easy pick to vote for the Menos. She was onto I mean, something. Was... <laughs> I'm sure production saw this and is trying to prevent her from coming back until the end of the season. So I think you were onto something, except for they brought her back anyway, and what you said would happen, happened. So Elka, really good prediction. Not even a conspiracy, just an accurate thing that you said. So good for you. <laughs> okay, and then we have... Nano writing in. Nano's a frequent uh, commenter. In last week's episode, my girl Yori won a gold star. Who's Yori? Yori. Georgie. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> my girl Yori won a gold star, and Madison picked her to do the lip sync against Wajardo. I haven't watched the extra content for members. I just saw a small clip. So, in the video, Bruno was mad that Madison didn't understand the rules. Since Georgie had won a gold star in the mini challenge, she couldn't be picked for the lip sync. But since the rules are confusing, Madison didn't understand and picked her. That's when Georgie won another gold star in this episode. Louise says, so they can't pick her, meaning that they can't vote for her to do the lip sync. 
From what I understand, once you have a gold star in the episode, you can't be picked, but Madison didn't understand that. The producers made the mistake by not explaining the rules, and that created the feud between Madison and Georgie. Do you think there's anything to that? Uh, I... <laughs> Are I, the rules so no, confusing no. that they're creating tension within the workroom? <laughs> I think the producers were yelling at them because they wanted them to pick Velveteen instead, because mm. Velveteen was dead, and they're like... You could have voted for anyone, meaning you could have voted for somebody that got the got the gold star. You could have voted for that person, or you could have also voted for the dead person to bring him back. So I think the producers really wanted Velveteen to come back alive, mm. and I think that's what they the just did it was. anyway. <laughs> and I feel like the beef has like a separate thing between yeah. them two, and I don't know what exactly is happening between them, but I like this, this conspiracy. Is a, this is a very good conspiracy, but I I like see it in a different way. Okay. Well, um, please comment. Uh, even if you don't have a conspiracy, uh, go ahead and comment below. Say what you're enjoying about the season. Are you okay with these crazy kooky rules? Oh, they're so crazy. Please stick with us for the rest of the season. Yes. Subscribe if you haven't already. Comment, like, and subscribe. We love you. Bye. Comenta. Bye. <laughs>